This is just the beginning. That's the world that we live in. Let me help you believe in what we can do when we stand united. We are one. We're the world. We can make a brighter tomorrow. Together, make a change. It's our life. We can step back from what we know is right. So let's shine our light. Oh, let's shine our light. We won't listen to what they're saying. We know it's just love that we're giving. To this place that we call our home, we can change what's been done, but it's still our run. We are. Hello, everybody. Welcome and thank you for joining us today on this session. Um, today's session is interactive, and the goal is to brainstorm innovative ideas for the toolkit that the panelists have developed to promote um, youth well-being and help improve learning outcomes. Uh, but before we start with this amazing session, I would like to welcome you all to the Catalyzing Change Week through this video. Hi, I'm Sanjoy Roy, the co-chair of the Catalyzing Change Week Programming Committee. Welcome to CCW 2024. This is where you'll meet social innovators, change makers, folks from government and from bilateral agencies. And of course, this is a place to look at best practices, share ideas and innovations and enjoy networking with each other. Welcome to the session. Hi, I'm Sanjoy Roy. Um, okay, so there's uh, here's some housekeeping rules before we start. Um, please keep your video on if you have the bandwidth. Um, share your name and organization and also feel free to introduce yourself in the chat. Kindly raise your hand and unmute when you wish to speak or if you have any question. And if you face any technical problems, please let me know. Um, and finally, enjoy the session. Thank you and over to you, uh, Archana. Thank you, Lana. I'll just switch over and quickly share my screen as well. And uh, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining our uh, session today as a part of Catalyzing Change Week. Uh, we're excited to go through this session with you and to brainstorm ideas that can impact thousands of children in India and beyond. So I'm Archana Sinha. I am the CEO and co-founder of Nourishing Schools Foundation. We help schools improve learning outcomes and teach children how to tackle malnutrition. We are also proud to be a Catalyst 2030 member. Uh, as many of you must know, joining this event, Catalyst 2030 is a collective of people and organizations that are all working together to ensure that we can achieve the sustainable development goals by 2030. Joining us today also as a co-panelist and uh, a fellow Catalyst 2030 member, as well as our longtime collaborator is Deep Jyoti Sonu Brahma. Deep is the co-founder and director of Farm to Food Foundation. And his organization is creating a generation of farming entrepreneurs or farmpreneurs, as he calls them, in Assam, which is in the northeastern part of India. Uh, he works to set up these farmpreneur clubs in schools, where children learn how to set up and manage school gardens as, as business ventures, uh, calculating their input costs, selling their produce, and so on, such that they start to see agriculture as a, as a sustainable livelihood option. And he also connects them with model farmers so that they 
have uh, guidance on how to proceed with this. We're uh, very glad to have you as a co-panelist today. Welcome, welcome, Deep. Also joining us as a co-panelist is Aditi Mehrotra, who's a public health nutritionist. Through her venture, Ani Spit Kids, she has been developing innovative ways to engage children in uh, private schools in learning about how to improve their nutrition, their health, and their well-being. She's also contributed to various publications, such as the yellow books that were published by the Food Safety and Standards Authority of India, which is a government body. As we kick off our session, I wanted to just share with you our objectives for the day. So our objectives are, of course, to ignite creativity and foster innovation. That's why we're so excited to have all of you join us today. And through this session, we want to crowdsource ideas for games and activities uh, to engage and educate children between fourth to ninth grade on the importance of nutrition, uh, physical activity, and overall uh, well-being. We also want to inspire creativity and drive positive change in schools such that we empower students to take charge of their health. So keeping that in mind, I want to talk a little bit about our toolkit because we keep saying games and activities for children and you might be thinking, uh, what, what does that mean? And we have a toolkit that we've developed uh, containing games and activities for school children that we wanted to share with you just as an example um, so you can see what we're talking about. So we have developed a toolkit and you can see a snapshot of it on the screen here, which has these different engaging games and activities that children can use in schools. And thematically, they broadly cover four areas. There's food and nutrition, which uh, I'll talk a bit more about. And there's sanitation and hygiene. There's also a section focused on agriculture, as well as a section focused on the midday meal. Uh, which for those of you who may not know, is uh, a countrywide program set up by the government to deliver school meals to children. So we see how we can strengthen the processes and implementation of that. And we roll this out to a teacher and a children-led approach. Uh, how that looks is that we give students a timetable called a milestone mapping. It's an eight-week rollout plan where we have teachers appoint ministers for all these different areas like food and nutrition, hygiene and sanitation, agriculture, and so on. So you can see that some of the students in these photos uh, are wearing badges, and those badges identify their designation as the minister of a particular domain. They are appointed across fourth to ninth grade. And then the way it rolls out is that over an eight-week period, every week there's at least one activity happening in every class. And that is led by the minister of that domain who bring their peers along and engage them with it. So this way, it really gives children a chance to lead and to be a part of creating solutions. Now, in terms of the different sections, I spoke about food and nutrition, and that section contains games and activities that have to do with changing dietary habits, as well as educating children about the nutritive properties of different foods, you might have heard the phrase that good artists borrow and great artists steal. And uh, I'm sharing that because many of the games and activities in our toolkit, in fact, are inspired by some very popular existing games and activities. Uh, and we've drawn inspiration from that and, and developed it with a variety of partners. So on the screen, you can see two sample cards from a game called Guess Who? And this game is played very similar to this mobile app you might have heard of called Heads Up, where what a student does is that they hold up a picture card, uh, such as this banana card, and their classmates get a corresponding clue card, which has a few sentences just talking about basic properties of bananas, such as I am a, a common fruit, my color darkens when I am cut or bruised, and also talking about certain nutritive properties of that food. And with the help of these clues, the child who's holding up the card has to guess the card that they're holding. So in this way, they learn something new, but it, it's not in a sort of preachy and top-down format. It's done in a really fun, engaging way. And so it's more likely that they will also go on to remember this uh, for the next few months or years. And then we have another section on 
sanitation and hygiene. So here you can see that some children are playing a game called investigate sanitation. You might wonder why sanitation and hygiene, but many studies have shown that having access to adequate sanitation and adopting proper personal hygiene and overall having a hygienic environment is quite essential in order to stay adequately nourished. So this game that they are playing teaches them to visualize what adequate and inadequate sanitation looks like. Simple things like a broken tap versus a fixed tap, water available in the toilet 24 seven versus water that may not be available. And the reason for that is that if you're going to go on and change these things, you also first have to visualize what an ideal outcome looks like. So these games help them do that, where you can see that the, the cards are sort of laid out and they take turns matching the uh, example of inadequate sanitation with its corresponding example of adequate sanitation. So while playing the game, they're also learning what is the outcome or the environment that their school and their homes should move towards. Another thing that we've seen is that the toolkit can only reach its full potential once the lessons that children learn in the schools can be applied going forward in their lives, as well as out in the communities surrounding the schools. So one way that we do that is with the school garden, where we have a school garden manual that teaches children how to set up and manage a school garden. Uh, Deep is here, as I said, from Farm to Food Foundation, his contribution has been invaluable in setting this up as well, since he has so much experience with this. And what we've seen is that children often go on to create homestead gardens in their communities too. So it has a ripple effect in terms of taking what they learned in the school and then spreading that to parents and other community members. Of course, I'm, I'm giving you all these examples that are, that are fun and exciting, but at the same time, I want to be transparent and share that uh, obviously rolling out an initiative like this or adopting a very game and activity-centered approach with children, which I and all the other panelists have adopted in our work in some way or the other, it also has its challenges. And I thought it would be great if we could hear from them on this because before we start heading into the brainstorming session, it will help you also keep in mind what the ground realities are. So I wanted to come to you, Deep, because you, of course, have been working for a long time in connecting children with nutrition as well as agriculture uh, and helping them get access to nutritious foods. So what are the challenges that you've had with this approach that our participants for the session today should consider? Um, thanks, uh, Archana. Um, thank you for inviting me to this panel. And uh, thank you, Catalyst 2030, for organizing this CCW. It's a wonderful platform. Um, uh, I've been coming here almost since the very first uh, year. Uh, I think it's the third year of it. Um, so it's always an exciting space. And and today's session, I think it's a very, very interesting. It's a very different kind of uh, session. Uh, you know, where uh, everybody gets to participate and everybody gets to put up their thoughts. So uh, I'm thoroughly excited about it. Um, coming back to the challenge, sorry for the long winding answer. Um, you know, one of the big challenges that we find uh, in, in the Northeast is, uh, especially working in public school, is uh, that... Uh, uh, the, uh, the 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 content many a times uh, does not reflect or does not in, is is not interesting enough for the young person many a times it's seen um, and you know all of us have been working with young people for a long time now we understand uh, that there are some certain needs that needs that needs to be probably positioned in a in a more effective and child friendly way so that you know uh, the child can start engaging with uh, uh, from the very beginning itself the other challenge that we find is that uh, i'm not talking about uh, I, i'm talking about you know the general the tool that we have seen that's operating in in school um, so one of the challenge is that many of these tools requires somebody uh, uh, somebody elder or adult to navigate with 
with the child. I think that's another big challenge. Um, and and third is that uh, there are several um, uh, uh, tool toolkits and several apps, several curriculums for young people. But what is missing is it's not giving enough uh, sense of accomplishment for the child. You know, when the child is going through a certain thing, it should celebrate the achievement of the child. It should celebrate the the work done by the child. Um, and uh, lastly, I think uh, what is also important is to map the the stakeholders' need, which is the school and the parents. Uh, and that's where I think the nourishing toolkit works such brilliantly because it is positioning itself into that nutrition requirement and the midday meal requirement, right? So therefore, the school's requirement is being uh, fairly met. Um, and like you mentioned about uh, some of the games that the children are playing in the school, uh, those are very, very amazing, interesting and child friendly games that they, they can pick up anytime, you know, they don't have to sit inside the classroom, even in their free period, they can just pick it up and then run it. I think that ease of use is missing in most cases, you know, uh, because all of us have been working for almost now two decades with Young, young people, we have our own ways of intellectualizing, over-intellectualizing the toolkit. I think that's where we have to restrain ourselves and uh, and understand the need of the child. I think some of these can, if can be taken care of, then I think it will be wonderful, wonderful. Uh, thanks. Thanks for uh, sharing that, Deep. And I can really agree with you that sometimes if you spent a lot of time working in health and nutrition, uh, while, of course, that's a strength, we also have to be mindful that sometimes it makes you go with solutions that are building on knowledge that you take as a given. And it's one of the reasons we also uh, ask that the participation for this session be broad based and that you need not have a background in health or nutrition, because sometimes the most powerful perspective you can come with is your own lived experience without, let's say, the, the technical knowledge. Uh, because if it's not fun, if it's not engaging and it's not basic enough, sometimes it, it just won't work, even though technically all the content can be absolutely correct, right? Uh, and uh, to also add to your point that it should meet the need of stakeholders, I, I wanted to share that something we've also recently been seeing is how can games and activities strengthen your very traditional mainstream learning outcomes too, uh, which are aiding reading comprehension, helping children learn basic mathematical uh, skills, right, addition, division, and so on. And then at a slightly more advanced level, talking about connecting it to the science curriculum, et cetera. I know for you, the schools, you see them as learning labs with the school gardens where you have shared with children concepts in science, how it can help them learn in a more practical way and, and making it easier to learn sometimes than learning through, through a textbook. So that's that's something interesting also for the participants to keep in mind. And you're working in, in the government school setting primarily. Uh, and I wanted to then also add to that with the perspective of working in private schools from Aditi's side, because Aditi, of course, you have extensive experience in engaging children in private schools in seeing health, nutrition, and well-being as, as a fun and an engaging topic and as an opportunity for them to take charge. So could you also share what have been some challenges for you there that our participants should keep in mind? Yeah, so uh, thanks, Archana. Please pardon me for my throat. I woke up with uh, no voice, literally. Uh, you know, past three days have been intensive sessions at school, addressing almost 500 uh, children at one time. So you can imagine the excitement. And this is uh, more passion than excitement that I've lost my voice, <laughs> screaming, shouting with the children. So... Um, you know, first of all, I'm I'm quite excited to be attending this workshop, uh, which is focused on the well-being of uh, this remarkable DIY, you know, digital native generation that I, you know, uh, work with. And, um, you know, being able to innovate <clears throat> and inspire and elevate the educational landscape for these, uh, uh, for this generation and the generations to come. I think I'm truly, truly inspired, first of all, by how how they thrive on, um, you know, interactive, hands-on learning experience, 
constantly exploring new knowledge <clears throat> you know and um, they are within the digital realm so our uh, learning and teaching has to be just um, you know very active because they are active creators of their own educational uh, learnings you know they are not passive consumers and as deep also rightly said that <clears throat> you know this is you know we can't uh, treat them with the traditional pedagogy so coming to your question i think uh, my thoughts also truly resonate with deep's insights into the challenges we encounter um, in our work um, i mean i can talk of the leading schools of india their challenges there are challenges and we know that it's crucial to acknowledge first of all these hurdles because um, you know these challenges would only deeply influence our strategies um, and approaches uh, to making health nutrition well being uh, very appealing and engaging uh, topics for these children so um, first we talk about the pedagogy of course um, i think uh, the multifaceted nature of food nutrition well being physical activity this kind of literacy no single pedagogical approach can ad adequately address all these aspects and uh, especially for for this generation that is very comfortable using the digital interface so if we can gamify most of our content and engage not just the children but the school community and also the parents i think uh, then the resistance to change especially put up by the by, by many schools public private government aided because their priority lies within the academic performance you know that our school rating should be this 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 you know so convincing them to incorporate you know health educational programs is definitely met with a lot of resistance and they don't want additional burden you know and they don't want to deviate from their traditional rote um, you know rote learnings and their curriculum and how the lesson plans are going to uh, shape up for the next month and for the quarter you know the next quarter secondly i think uh, the second uh, focus would be uh, on parental expectations so when i interact with parents they are like oh health we can take care of but it is more of a priority um, for academic achievement again over uh, holistic development so i often feel that there is um, you know lot of skepticism towards such initiatives you know of prioritizing health nutrition and well being because i think they just say that oh this is something we it's quite doable we'll take care of the children's health but they're not talking about behavior modifications that can come in you know and the third of course is the staff buy in when i get into any school or i'm sure all of us be it nourishing schools or uh, deeps initiative uh, without the buy in from educators and staff i don't think such initiatives can gain traction to be effectively implemented so what i have actually floated in the last 5 years is my win program so it 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 is an acronym which i use for wellness integrated network when learner is at the core and then we have the school along with the staff then we have the parent participation and then it is a win win so when these uh, you know when we are going to be designing some kind of games and all it is very important that they look into uh, creating some kind of games that are also taken carried back home in form of uh, you know tools and trackers which even the parents can sit and work on and also um, you know work collaboratively there can be team uh, projects there can be at home assignments along with the parents so it it or or having some kind of an event that calls in parents to come into the school premises within the school premises and then they team up uh, with the teacher with the learner and they themselves then it is a win win so i think this is what i've really faced and um, i also i'm putting forth the winning formula thank you thank you for sharing that aditi and i think some themes that have also uh, stuck out for me from what both of you have said is that it's important to make it fun easy and simple to engage with this uh, it should be something that 
uh, involves all stakeholders, not only the child, but also teachers and parents. And it's important to align it with their priorities. Children participating in it should be doing more than just playing a game or an activity. It should also give them a sense of achievement. And it's important to make it measurable in some way because the more they can also see the progress that they've made and talk about it in tangible ways, the more everybody else gets interested and excited about this as well. So thank you both for sharing that. And what I'll do next is just move into broadly outlining the brainstorming session that we will start after this. So we will set up a breakout room soon uh, in order to go through these steps. But I wanted to lay out all those steps for each of you. Uh, I will summarize them here. And then what will happen is that once you get assigned to a breakout room after this, you will get some time for each of these. So for example, for the brainstorming section, you would get about 10 minutes or so to discuss it in your group and, and so on. And we'll keep prompting you in the chat. So you will have these points for reference as well. So the first part is, is just guided brainstorming. Why we say guided is we obviously realize that we're working with limited time here and trying to keep it very open in terms of how you brainstorm could, could make it, uh, could be difficult given the amount of time. So what we think will be helpful is why don't you think about a game or activity that you have enjoyed in the past, like cooking or playing something like hide and seek or even playing a board game, uh, watching a movie, reading books, etc. And then think about how could you reimagine these games and activities for children for fourth to ninth grade, keeping your theme in mind. When you will be assigned to a breakout room, you'll also be assigned a theme. Uh, for ease of uh, understanding, we're mirroring the themes from our toolkit. So they'll either be food or nutrition or hygiene and sanitation or agriculture. So what can you do related to your theme that is perhaps adapting uh, an activity or game that you're already familiar with. You don't have to take it exactly as it is, but perhaps draw inspiration from it. And then you change the rules or you add in some elements related to the topic and, and find ways to make it even more fun. We leave that, we leave that open to you, but that might really help center your brainstorming so that you're able to develop some idea given the limited amount of time. Then the next step where we prompt you that we are now moving from brainstorming to evaluation and prioritization, you'll still stay in the breakout room. We'll, we'll send you a chat to alert you is evaluation and prioritization. So the first 10 minutes, different participants in the group might broadly throw out a lot of ideas, but then during the evaluation and prioritization stage, you can think about what seemed to be feasible to implement within a school environment and what could be quite impactful and identify one of these ideas that you would like to develop. We'll keep about seven minutes or so for this. And I know that it might be a bit difficult to decide it also, but you need not get kind of too caught up on it. Should you decide, let's say two ideas are also very promising, you have the freedom to focus on them both um, or park one for later and maybe get into one more right now. But be open that it could be an idea that perhaps you didn't come up with but you can build on that another team member may have proposed, or perhaps you can combine your idea with theirs and come up with something even more impactful. So use this time just to narrow it down a little um, and get a bit more specific about what the game or activity that you want to ideate related to your theme could be. Uh, if you um, have done that, then the last stage will be prototyping, right? And uh, we'll just wrap this up before you join the breakout rooms. So uh, prototyping will be that we'll share an online form where you can just note down a broad description of your idea. It really will be adding your team members' names if you want to reveal that, it's optional. And then maybe adding instructions. So for example, I have thought of a crossword activity. Here are some clues. Or I've thought of a fun recipe. Here are the steps for it. Or this is a board game that children can play. Uh, this is the, these are the rules of the game and these are the materials required and so on. So getting more detail. I know it might seem a bit daunting that we're trying to do this in the next half an hour, but do it to the extent that you are able to. We have run sessions like these before in schools and colleges too, and you'll be surprised that even in this much time, there are a lot of interesting ideas you can come up with. 
and you will have access to the prototyping form even after the session. So if some more ideas come to you or a, a completely, uh, you know, a completely different direction you want to go in for an idea you've already submitted, you can share that with us also. Because what we would be doing is crowdsourcing ideas that our toolkit development team can use to develop even more games and activities for our toolkit because we update that on an annual basis. And of course, we will share it with our core panelists too, who are working on initiatives either with us or independently targeting school children as well. And they can also incorporate that into their work. So I think with that, let's uh, you join our respective breakout groups. You must have seen a pop up. You can join those groups and give the first 10 minutes for the guided brainstorming, which I'm just putting here on the screen for all of you. And uh, um, Devanshi can just uh, put these points in the chat as well. So you have them to help guide you. You can join your breakout rooms now and spend the next 10 minutes on this. Great, I can see various. Hello, everyone. I think we'll see everyone back in the main room within the next minute. Hello, everyone. I think we're, we're all back to the main room. Uh, so first of all, thank you for all the really interesting ideas that you came up with. I uh, dropped into each of the rooms briefly, and I know the other panelists did as well. And it was really exciting to hear the ideas that you were coming up with. Uh, we've also shared a form in the chat, which I know many of you have started using already to submit these ideas. I can see some submissions have come in as uh, already and some of you might need an extra few minutes so you could also do it right after the session it shouldn't shouldn't take more than five minutes and this link we will keep it active uh, at least for another week should more ideas come to you uh, we will collect your ideas and go over them in our toolkit development team to see how we can incorporate them into our work and our initiatives reaching thousands of children um, i also thought it would be nice if we could have at least one group very briefly, if someone would like to share uh, one or two of the interesting ideas that you talked about in, in your group in, in a minute or less, because I know we are just about at time, but would it be nice to hear about an idea that another group with came up with. So would anybody like to volunteer to just talk about an idea that their group discussed? I know, I know it can be a little intimidating to speak in, in, a, in a larger group, but I know all of you were quite enthusiastic about speaking in your breakout groups. So if even one of you wants to share it, I think it would be interesting for all of us. I, I don't want to be the person who, who sort of calls people out. So I'll give it maybe another, another 10 seconds. I can volunteer. So... In our uh, group, we had Trishna Muni and Basudev. So Trishna Muni uh, kind of, you know, came up with this idea, like the game she used to play earlier when she was a child. Like uh, there would be a rope that, you know, two people would, would be kind of, you know, uh, uh, the, there will be a rope with fruits on it. And then the students can jump and, you know, pick fruits from that rope. And it is kind of an outdoor game that can be played uh, on picnics or you know something like that but we also thought about versions of it that can be maybe played inside the classroom also or you know if anything for example Basudev came up with this idea of storytelling as a as a platform to for the students to educate so we also thought of if we can merge these two ideas of you know maybe uh, instead of a rope doing it on, uh, on a blackboard where you know there can be fruits or vegetables and then there can be a, a flashcard of a story or a riddle which uh, the students will get and then they can mark the fruit that they think is the best suited or, you know, 
like that so there can be many multiple versions of the same game can be played outdoors can be played indoors with the blackboard or you know even online so yeah that was a prototype thanks for sharing that and uh, even from being in the groups i think it was quite interesting how the arts came into a lot of people's ideas i heard something about songs and school gardens and another group was discussing the power of drama and wall art and stories as well so uh, that's really that's really fun to see that when we talk about creativity it's not just in coming up with the idea but in how the idea is being conceptualized and implemented as well uh, i wanted to address that there was a question asking about the overall objectives etc of the session and so again to recap it is to collect ideas that we can incorporate into various initiatives to engage school children uh, and this of course i i know the ideas will be very initial and basic but all ideas start out like that so i want to again extend my gratitude to all of you who have chosen to join us today and to really be a part of this movement of helping children learn how they can take charge of tackling malnutrition i i want to thank my panelists again as well for sharing their their unique perspectives and and being very open about their challenges as well as for guiding the discussions that were happening in the breakout rooms this is this is really only the beginning and we would love to involve people more and more in in being a part of addressing this issue and making participation all the more broad based so thank you so much for joining and we hope you will continue to stay in touch with us and we encourage you to join the other exciting sessions that are happening as a part of catalyzing change week as well do check out the agenda it's very global and the topics are multifaceted uh, we hope you enjoyed participating in this session and that you had fun uh we look forward to keeping in touch with all of you um we uh, we are nourishing schools foundation we've got farm to food foundation here and ani spit kids and of course everyone came from their own organizations introducing themselves in the chat as well so so let's uh, let's uh, stay in touch khalid i do see your hand up but i uh, we we have kind of very limited time so we can just hear from you very quickly yes yes it's just only a uh... uh remind you actually it's, thank you for this opportunity and thank you for this uh, workshop actually my, my details in chat box please contact me because i have very wonderful things for you for teacher for uh, parents for schools for new generation thank you we will talk later about it thank you it's my pleasure bye bye thank you we we made a note of it and again thank you everyone take care and i hope you have a great uh, rest of your day and and the weekend Bye bye